name's Robert Carmichael. My name is Liz Carmichael. I am uh, from Puerto Rico. Um, grew up in a, uh, believe it or not, a Southern Baptist home. Um, one of the few Southern Baptist churches in Puerto Rico because most of uh, most of the churches, most of the people down there are uh, Catholic. So uh, I was f I, what I think is uh, fortunate enough to grow up in a uh, uh, in a church much like this one because it was uh, small and uh, family oriented and uh, united. Um, felt really at home. I think it was around uh, the age of eight or nine. Uh, when I came to accept uh, Christ uh, as my Savior, um, and it was great. It was great. It was a great childhood. I loved growing up in the Caribbean. Um, loved everything about it. It was everything I knew. Uh, it was all about the beach, uh, great weather, um, uh, great environment, uh, lots of family and friends. Well, uh, my father gets transferred. He gets transferred to. Uh, New Jersey. That was really my first time outside of the States um, and it was probably the worst four years of my life because it was not only was I going to start high school but now I got to start high school in a completely different country. Um, you know it was rough. It was rough uh, and I think around high school was when I started sort of separating from church and from God and it was probably just because I was I don't know, like most of us, we, we sort of go through that phase where we get away from church and from God, and, and I think that was the beginning of it. Coming from a family um, that we have a lot of struggles when I was growing up, um, came from a broken marriage between my mom and dad, um, I really have really rough times. Um, I grew up in a Catholic uh, church. Um, I went to a private school, a Catholic private school. Um, really always missing something. It was like going to church, but repeating the same thing over and over. It wasn't helping at all. Um, I'm the youngest of three. Um, um, girls at my house um, had to grow up very fast, like um, coming very mature at an early age. My dad cheated on my mom all the time and um, at a certain point after 23 years of marriage, it, they, something just went wrong and my mom took it very, it was like more like a emotional abuse than he never physically, never did anything to her, but emotionally it was pretty bad. Um, when I was in my last year of high school, I heard my, I was sleeping and my older sister was screaming. When I went there, My mom was with a knife in her hands. She tried to take her knife. She went to a psychiatric hospital in Puerto Rico. She was there like for a few weeks. It was a Christmas time. My dad was nowhere to be found. He was with another person and he didn't care. My mom didn't want to come out from that place because she didn't have to do anything. They were doing everything for her. So she was not ready to go back to work. She was not ready to drive. Um, so I stepped up. I was the one like doing everything for her. Um, thank God because really He's stronger than anything. At that point, I didn't see God. I, I was like really upset. I didn't talk with my dad for a few years. I was very angry at him, very angry. 
I decided to confront him, I decided to talk to him, and I understood many things after. So after many years, I, I figured out, I was like, it's not worth it for me to be in this much pain. Um, he even de- didn't realize what he was doing. He's still at this time, and he doesn't think that he did anything wrong. So I just pray for him every day. After high school, um, I, I just didn't get used to the States, um, and I went back to Puerto Rico, went back to college down there. Um, that was both good and bad, because it was probably the, the, the funnest years of my life, uh, and the best years of my life as far as uh, just growing up, um, you know, and doing basically what you wanted to do, and like most people who, uh, at that age, you just completely separate from well, I shouldn't say most people, but a lot of people uh, go through that phase where you separate from, from God and from church and you just sort of think that you can do your own thing. Uh, and while I was having a ton of fun, uh, I sort of fell in with the wrong crowd um, big time. This was before I met my wife. Um, and we just did not the most, uh, not the most legal and not the most legit things for a very long time. and. At the time, I thought I was having a lot of fun, but in reality, it sort of, you know, took me to uh, some uh, some really dark places. Uh, you know, I'd, I'd wake up at night and just think to myself, what the heck am I doing? Um, and for years, I was just, you know, uh, lost, really. You know, again, I thought I was having fun, but I was just completely lost. Uh, luckily, I was able to, you know, sort of start getting my act together. I, I went to college and uh, that's where I met my uh, my beautiful wife um, who, uh, um, you know, when, when I first saw her, uh, uh, and she's gonna laugh and I'm gonna laugh later, but when I first saw her, I, I remember telling all my friends that that's the, that's the woman I'm gonna marry. Um, they all looked at me like I was crazy because I really didn't know her and we really hadn't spoken other than a couple classes that we had together. Uh, but for whatever reason, I knew that that, you know, sometimes you just know and um, and I just knew. Uh, I knew that that was the person I wanted to be with. So I met my husband um, in 1999. Um, we went to a college in Puerto Rico. Um, I met him in a class that I had <laughs> Tuesdays and Thursday. It was a class at nine o'clock, and the room six twenty-seven. <laughs> um, since then, we start talking, and uh, he asked me for the phone number. He actually was shaking. Um, I asked him if he wanted me to write the number for him. Um, he was no, no, I got this. Um, and uh, um, he actually called me the next day, um, and we start talking since then. Uh, we ended up getting married. Like I said, I knew she was going to be the one I was going to marry. Um, and we get married in Puerto Rico. And then, uh, uh, you know, a couple years later, we end up moving to the States. By that time, I was finally ready to, to leave home uh, and start, you know, my, my, I guess, my adult life. Um, having said that, though, uh, I, I still hadn't come back fully to church. Um, you know, we, we, we got married fairly young and, you know, I still didn't know what married life was all about and I was still going out and drinking and getting home at four or five o'clock in the morning and, um, you know, I, I still knew deep down inside that wasn't, uh, it wasn't what I needed to be doing. Um, we've been married for 14 years. Um, it's been a roller coaster. We were not ready to get married, but, um, it's been fun though. <laughs> At the beginning, it wasn't that fun because um, he was going out like he was still single, um, leaving me uh, at home with his parents. His mother got pretty upset too. I had um, two miscarriages, one before our son, Alexander. Um, we were ready to have babies and we were not able to. Um, it actually took us like seven years um, for me to get pregnant. Uh, we have our son. Um, it was uh, 
the lay the everything went well until labor um Everything went well until the end of the labor. Um, the umbilical cord, he had to take the umbilical cord around his neck. And you just can hear like the doctors running in the, to the room. Um, me screaming why he's not crying. My husband covering like that way I cannot see anything. And when they finally brought him back, um, uh, I told him just go with them just to make sure that the baby is fine. Um, everything was fine. My mother in law stayed with me in the room. And um, I was the one that actually passed after. Um, I lost a lot of blood. Um, so when my husband came back to the room, he see a lot of doctors on top of me too. So, um, so it was pretty nerve wracking. Um, I just remember the last time, the last thing I remember before I passed was like holding my mother in the hand and telling her that if I wasn't able to make it or something happened to me. And just want him to continue his life, just to get someone that actually loved my son too. The labor was uh, extremely difficult. I, I can't uh, even begin to to talk about exactly what happened because uh, I, I I just know I'd lose it. Um, it it's just um, you know, long story short, you know, I thought I was gonna lose uh, both my son and my wife um, during the labor uh, on the same day. Um, and it was just difficult because I'm, I'm right in front of everything and I'm seeing everything and, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, uh, it was difficult. I, I, I can't even get it. I'll just leave it at that. But, um, um, it, it, it quickly turned from, um, uh, from a dark, uh, few hours and probably the, the, the worst few hours of my life to um, to something great because it, it made me realize that um, you know I know it sounds cliche but we always say oh, God has a plan and, and you know I, I think it was meant to be this way I, I mean I don't think I know um, you know I think it was something that he meant to um, to open my eyes I, I guess really and, and help me understand that um, I had to get my act together uh, once we had our son, we knew that uh, what, at least what my parents uh, taught me um, in going to church every Sunday, we knew that that's what we wanted for our son. Uh, and, you know, we just knew that we had to make a complete change. And, uh, you know, I think about three or four years ago uh, is when we just basically said, you know, we need a complete change in our life. And if we want to, you know, do this right and raise our son the right way, we have to stop talking about it and actually start doing it and that's when we started fully going to church uh, my job it brought us over here to charlotte and i think that was the best thing that ever happened to us because uh, that's where we we felt more comfortable in going to church was here in charlotte and we started going to elevation uh church and at first it was great uh it still is a great church um it's what i think brought us closer to god at the time and um, after a while, though, we, we just felt that we needed something more close-knit, family-oriented. Um, and that's what brought us to Men Hill. You know, we just love the, the, the close-knit uh, community here. And uh, right away, everyone just uh, uh, accepted us with, with open arms and, and, and uh, hugs and, um, you know, just introducing themselves to us. And we just felt right at home, and we haven't looked back since. Uh, you know, and I think eventually this will be where we want to grow as a family and our son loves it the other day he said he doesn't want to change churches ever again because he loves Sunday school here and you know and, and again this reminds me of, of growing up uh, in church when I was uh, my son's age uh, but I only had good memories and you know we hope to, to 
keep the good memories going.